Okay, here we go. The second attempt on the uh, Hubble cylinder. And uh, I got it once. I'm just simply trying to get it on camera. So that I could uh, show what's inside and, and actually make a, a clip out of it. And uh, yeah, it's not an awfully expensive lock here in Finland. I actually got it off at a sale at just a bit below 10 euros. So, okay price. Uh, especially when once you see what's inside. Um, but yeah. Pretty kind of standard oval cylinder lock. Nothing too special about it. Simply that it's full of all kinds of special looking pins. So that's kind of the fun part, and of course, the, one of the reasons why I wanted to show this guy is to you. Did we get it? No, not yet. And definitely all sorts of different levels of full set in this guy. But it has a bit of a poor feedback. Also be a bit that I'm a bit pissed that I just tried to get also the American thousand hundred series on camera. I actually managed to do that. Fully got the lock, put it back together, everything nicely in quite a good time, I'd say. And then I didn't have my microphone on, so I got no noise, sound on that one. There we go. So that's, that's getting that open, so a lot of small crackle inside this guy. And uh, for those ones asking, uh, PN07 hook from Multipick. And uh, SB14, as they talk, the keyway tensioner. Uh, so let's turn the core there and lock it. We do have the keys. Just a second. Let me find them. I think I tossed them somewhere here. So, some nice high low high lows, and um, it had a nasty looking C clip, so I removed that. Uh, also, I had some trouble finding a good floor. What I did was I actually just uh, took one pin out of the time first and then I used some soldering iron and uh, filled up that gap there because I'm going to use it as a challenge lock later and that way now I will actually not need a uh, shim because it was it was really dropping all of the pins inside and uh, that wasn't fun so let's then take a look 
turn it just ever so slightly so that we can use the create surface smoothest one to go but there we are and here you can see the surface which I filled in uh, compared to the bottom but that allows me to actually get it out a bit easier and then we've got six here so let's pop it here Okay, so we have everything standard inside this one, and like said previously, it's a rather open keyway for everything. And uh, yeah, I totally already forgot which way around. We went this way around, I think. Let's have it that way, and then do this. On this side as well. Okay, we have a standard, then we have a Christmas tree. Let's see if we can actually get the camera a bit closer. Maybe that's a better viewing angle. And uh, yeah, it's not too much light. Then we have a spool. And then we get a Christmas tree. And then we get a spool. And yet again a Christmas tree. Indeed. And the last one is a spool as well. So there we go. Quite a lot of fun and games inside this lock. So I'd say that because it, this is what it comes out uh, stock. It's, it's not bad. These are of course uh, lined in so that they are kind of uh, in play as much as possible but yeah it's a very fun fun lock to pick and uh, maybe if that was the correct order that things are lined up in the lock let's see if uh, we can kind of make sure at the same time that everything is actually coming into into play meaning let's uh, pop these back and then see how far how far these guys actually extend because I've seen in many locks that uh, there's something something set so high or so low that it does not come into play at all. So this is how things are. So this spool barely, just about barely comes into play. That's okay. Let's see this Christmas tree. That comes into play quite nicely. So it's uh, at least one of the 
schools are there should be gonna one two and then out so yeah this this should work quite nice then we got the unlucky school again so there's a at least the two spools are where the two highest ones are and so those will not really play play a lot of role and then we'll have again one of the christmas trees it will be playing quite well then we have the Okay, so that's uh, that's a very very nicely sitting spool actually. That one, then we'll have the Christmas trees, which is quite similar, and then we'll have the standard here. So I guess when things are moving about, we could take this standard and switch it with this one, so then we get a bit more uh, spool flop because this would uh, provide a bit more flop and the standard would most likely do the same job at the very beginning or yeah this and that I'm actually guessing that since Compare these two a bit. Okay, so here you can see that the kind of it's it's not one hundred percent straight, but it's kind of uh, pointed a bit or or kind of uh, rounded. And now, if we take a look at, for instance, one of these Christmas trees, it's not rounded at all. And the same actually applies for the spool. But for the spool, we have one side. So uh, this side is is very fair and square. But this one is a bit rounded. So if we have this actually uh, counterintuitively this way, we'll have less flop in the core. Let's do that. And uh, yeah, let's pin it back up and uh, one by one. And here I decided to take that one going down. Okay, I'm barely seeing anything. Let's see if we can get the flashlight on. Okay, so there we go. One down. And then we want these ones to go this way around. And I guess here's the same thing. I want to reduce the flop a bit. And push 
There we go. We'll take the standard this time into the second to last, and if nothing else, it makes my practice runs more difficult when I pin it up bit differently each and every single time. There we go. Let's see if we can get the flashlight out. Okay. There we go. Flash off. Sorry about the delay there. Um, and then Everything is upstairs nicely. And now that we have the top portion of the lock ready, we should be able to just push things in, lock things about. Let's see if we got less flop into the core. A bit less, maybe, but still quite a lot. But there we go. And uh, let's still see that the key works. Yes, so all is good. I'm just putting the uh, loop behind uh, into place so that we can't accidentally drop it. But that was the Hable, and uh, it's a very nice one, I'd say. Thanks.